Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. It's great to be among you. And I want to share with, uh, in our opening prayer, I just want to share a reading from Luke chapter 22, verse 27, where Jesus says, I'm among you as the one who serves. I'm among you as the one who serves. Let us pray. Loving God, sometimes we have this illusion that we're all self-sufficient. But you know us better than that. You know that we are dependent people who need people to serve us. And today, we're reminded of the women, our mothers, who did nurture us at our greatest time of dependency, who they served us selflessly. And we thank you for our parents, and our, especially our mothers this morning. But we're reminded also that you too have nurtured us, served us, guided us. Lord, as we come to serve you, remind us of that and also give us the, the strength and the wisdom to serve others. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask Ben to bring the readings to you today. Good morning, everyone. Uh, great to be with you this week. And I tell you what, it's pretty cold here this morning. I should be wearing a jumper, but... Um, that's all right. I've got the, the word of the Lord to share with you and it hopefully warmed me up a bit. So uh, Russell's asked me to read for him two verses. First one is from Psalms 88, 1 to 3 and 13 to 18. O Lord, the God who saves me, day and night I cry out before you. May my prayer come before you. Turn your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of trouble and my life draws near the grave. And that's 1 to 3, 13 to 18. But I cry to you for help, O Lord. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Why, O Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me? From my youth I have been afflicted and closed to death. I have suffered your terrors and am in despair. Your wrath has swept over me. Your terrors have destroyed me. All day long they surround me like a flood. They have completely engulfed me. You have taken my companions and loved ones from me. The darkness is my closest friend. Wow. I'm sure we all feel like that at some stages. Uh, the second verse is from 1 John 5, 1 to 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God, to obey his commands, and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. Uh, that's the word of the Lord. And uh, yeah, we'll get Russell back to share his exciting message with us. I can't wait to hear what you've got to say, Russell. Welcome. Thanks, Ben. Uh, I have to start today's service with a bit of an apology. We usually take our readings from what's called the lectionary, which comes, which gives you all the readings for each day. And today's reading was supposed to be Psalm 98, but I didn't quite have my glasses on properly, and I read it as 88. And I thought, what an unusual psalm for a Mother's Day service. It's a psalm of lament. But then I thought about it, and I thought, isn't it amazing that we don't often talk about the lament psalms. We very rarely have a psalm of lament in church. And yet a third of the psalms are all crying out to God for help. And this Psalm 88, you could say, is the mother of all grumbles and belly aches to God because most of the psalms of lament, the person puts forward their case and says, God, have you forgotten me? Forgive me. Where are you, God? And God, I, I need you. And it's appeals to God. It's like the person vents their anger and at the end of each um, psalm, by the end of it, they have done that and they've allowed God to fill them. They come at a point of peace. Psalm 88 
And the only other psalm I can recall is Psalm 44, and not like that. Because at the end of Psalm 88, the person is still angry at God. The person still hasn't got her, their problem resolved. And so it's, it's interesting that this was the, the psalm that I stumbled on. And yet, in some ways, obtuse ways, I found it had a lot to do with Mother's Day. Because one of the things I'm conscious of at Mother's Day is that quite often, for, for many people, this is not a day of celebration. Like Christmas, we find that while people celebrate at Christmas, many people find it's their greatest time of loneliness. I think sometimes Mother's Day can have the same impact. I think of people who can't have children and the living agony they go through of seeing other people with family and friends and yet they have no child and desperately want one. I think of people who on this day recall the death of their child and they suffer for that. I think of parents who, who struggle when they've spent, put all their life and their effort into their children only to find that their children have neglected them or rejected them or have gone astray on their own way. How many grieving people are there for their children? And then on the other hand, there may be some of you who had a mother who was abusive or neglectful. As I said, we don't often read the laments in church. Church is a place we seem to think where it should be uplifting, it should be inspiring, it should be joyful. And that's true. But that's only half of the story. If you look at the Jewish tradition, they were people who knew how to party. <laughs> they were people who knew how to party. They, there are so many feasts that the Jews have where they celebrate what God has done in their life. But there are also people of, of lament, people who've gone through struggle. And that's often reflected in their psalms. And are they any different to us? We are people who have times of joy, times of celebration. But we're also people who have times of struggle, times of difficulty, times of screaming out to God and saying, where are you, God? And I think really we think of those two things as opposite, opposite things, but they are not in a way. They are complementary. They are part of who we are. And if we come to church just to celebrate the good times, we're leaving out part of our emotion because our whole, if we want a relationship with God, that has to include every emotion and that includes agony. It includes suffering. And as I said, for many this is a difficult time. We have just come back from a family get-together with five daughters and husbands and grandchildren. There were something like 29 of us all gathered in one place, celebrating just being together in relationship. And I have a distant relative that we were invited for one day there. And she's a young woman of 24. Her mother has died. Her father doesn't want to have anything to do with it. She has no siblings. And I think as my family celebrates this, how does she celebrate Mother's Day then? Two women that stand out for me in the scriptures have that aspect of lament and party. <laughs> I think of Mary. Mary who uh, had, Jesus, had, had the angel Gabriel appear and tell her that she would be a woman who would bear the Saviour. And in Luke chapter 1, we find Mary singing praises to God. Why would you choose me? I'm so, you know, I'm so blessed that I have this son that is going to be the salvation of the world. But we also find in chapter 2 that when Mary presents her child for dedication, Simeon says, a sword will pierce your heart. The other one I think of is probably less known. In fact, this poor woman doesn't even get a name. She is Samson's mother, Manoah's wife. That's all they called her. But I think of her because her circumstances were similar to Mary's. An angel appeared to her, told her she would have a son. He would be a leader of his people. He would be the salvation of the Jewish people. And his name was Samson. And so she lived in hope 
that this man would be the salvation and he turned out to be an egotistical womanizer with a bad temper. Yes, he was the salvation of his people in the end. But I wonder how much she must have agonised over how her son would turn out. We need to have that balance of laments and parties. <laughs> and today, on Mother's Day, I feel we need to do both of those. We need to celebrate the joy of motherhood and remember the good times of our parents. But we need to also grieve for those who suffer today. But the exciting aspect of all this is that we're also children of God. We may have had a bad memory of our own upbringing or a bad memory of our own children, but we have the privilege of being children of God. No matter who we are, no matter what we've done, we have that privilege of coming in to the presence of God as a child comes into the presence of their father or mother. And I want to read this to you. I just want to, sometimes we, I spend too much time talking and we spend not enough time listening to the scripture. But I just want to read this again because it's so precious in John, 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Isn't that beautiful? And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we, we know that we love the children of God by loving God and carrying out his commands. This is love for God, to obey his commands. And his commands are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And it's exciting, isn't it? We are children of God. We are part of one big, beautiful family. And we're called to obedience. It's interesting, isn't it? The word obedience sometimes doesn't ring with some people. But we are called to obedience. Because if we love someone, then we will be obedient. And John says... You know, that's not too hard. Why is it too hard? It's not hard because God is obedient to the promises he makes to us. Our obedience to God is not hard because God is obedient to the promises he makes to us. And when we go through moments where we feel like the writer in Psalm 88, that, you know, we're angry and we're, we're disturbed and we're not happy and things are not going well, we know we have a God who understands. He understands us enough to tolerate our shaking our fist at him, our doubting him. He understands us. He understands our pains. He understands our joys. We belong. We belong. And you can be the loneliest person in the world, but you belong to Jesus Christ. Not only do you belong, it says we have overcome. We've overcome the world. How? By belief in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And no matter what you're going through today, no matter what is happening in your life today, remember that you are a precious child of God, one who belongs to him. You are loved. You are loved unconditionally. There is no because or if or but. You are loved unconditionally. But, and you are his when you believe in Jesus Christ. We are part of one big family. And today we celebrate that as a small group of people, but part of a worldwide church and a worldwide family that glorifies in Jesus Christ as our parent. Let's pray. Loving God, we are a mixture of people. We are a group of people with different emotions, with different feelings. Some of us are going through painful times. Some of us are going through times of celebration and joy. But Lord, we are your people. We are united in our love for you, in our knowledge that we are a part of your family. 
We are a part of something that is so much bigger than us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you sacrificed a son. You knew what the loss of a son was like. We thank you too that not only did you sacrifice a son, you took joy in this son. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And Lord, sometimes we long to hear those words. This is my beloved child in whom I am well pleased. But we are yours. We are yours because we believe in you. We believe you are the source of salvation, but also the one who brings us into a great and close relationship that goes beyond any human understanding. Lord, we thank you today. And as we celebrate mothers, we also celebrate the parenthood of the Trinity. Lord, bless us and use us today that we might be a blessing to others, that we might overcome this world of sin and darkness. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Uh, we'll now take up our offering, and uh, I know that we can't put our offering through the, through the, um, the screen, but we, it is a time where we, we think of not only our offering to God, but what God has offered us. And we pray too that he would offer us a heart that is generous as we love him more and we experience his love for us. Let's pray. Loving God, what can we give you that you have not already got? We can give you the one thing that you long for, and that is us. You long to be in a relationship with us. And so, Lord, we pray that we would be generous, not just with our money, but with with all that we have, the parts of us that we hold back, Lord, we release them to you, that we might be truly surrendered to you in perfect obedience so that we might understand your perfect love. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you this day and forevermore. Amen.